What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over Microsoft Advertising Dynamic Search Ads. So I've gone over Dynamic Search Ads in Google Ads, and I've gone over them a little bit in Microsoft Advertising as well, but I wanted to create a video specific for this topic. So what we're going to do is get started in our Microsoft Advertising account. Now Microsoft Advertising was previously called Bing Ads, so if you're familiar with Bing Ads, it's the same exact thing, they just renamed the platform. So in order to run dynamic search ads, there's different ways to target your advertisements, but ultimately you're using your website and you're using the pages on your website to target your advertisements. So where I would get started if you are running dynamic search ads is coming over here to shared library on the left hand side, and then what you wanna do is click on view business data, and you wanna click on manage page feeds. So when you click on page feeds, you're going to see it's going to enable you to easily target specific web pages in dynamic search ad campaigns. So that's ultimately what our goal is here. So I've uploaded a page feed already here. If you want to know what a page feed looks like, there's really just two columns. So you have page URL. So this is the main column. This is the column that you absolutely need to have. And then what you can use is custom labels. So you can label each of these URLs. So just a quick example with labels, what you would do is you would have this column B and you would put one label in column C, you would put the second label, column D, you'd put the third label. So you're going to enter labels just like that. Now this is just a standard CSV file we have here. So one thing you can do is just target by page URL, but it can be helpful if you group some of your different content together. So maybe you want to use a label like syncs for three different sync pages that you have on your website. So that's just one option that you have. Generally what I'll do is I'll just use page URLs. You don't even need to use a page feed if you don't want to. So once you create your page feed for your website, what you wanna do is you wanna upload it here to your page feeds under shared library and business data. So once you have it uploaded, you're gonna see it right here. So if we click on it, you're gonna see my page feed. Really easy to manage it as well. Once you have it, you can always add an item. So you can add new page URLs, you can add new custom labels. So it's really easy to manage your page feed directly through the Microsoft Advertising Interface. So you don't necessarily need to continue to create this CSV file here and keep it updated. You can just do it directly in Microsoft Advertising. So once you have your page feed uploaded, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to the campaign screen. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new campaign. Okay, so you're gonna see what's the goal of this campaign. So they're gonna have a bunch of different goals here. So the goal we're gonna be using is dynamic search ads. So we're gonna click on dynamic search ads here. And this is how you create dynamic search ads campaigns is as you're setting up your campaign, you choose it from the list. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna name our campaign. So we're gonna do is dynamic search ads example. And we'll just do the name of our website that we're going to be doing it for, farmhousegoals.com. Then you want to set your campaign budget. So you can set an individual budget per day. If you click on daily budget options here, you can use standard or accelerated. Now, for the most part, you should just use standard delivery. And you can see as of November 1st, 2019, they'll all use standard budget delivery. So just stick to standard here and just set your daily budget. So we're going to keep scrolling down. Now the next thing we want to do is set our website. So our website here is going to be farmhousegoals.com. Keep in mind website and website language cannot be changed once you save and go to the next step. So you're not able to target with multiple websites here. You just want to use your one single website. Now targeting source, what I generally do is use URLs from both Bing's index of my website and my page feed. And then we're going to select our page feed here that we had uploaded in the previous step. So any page feed you have uploaded, you can keep it here for your campaign. And what you want to do is keep your page feed as updated as possible because it's going to help you to target your advertisements. So we're going to keep scrolling down here. Next is going to be location. So you can set specific locations for your advertisements if you want to just target a local market. Maybe you want to target multiple countries where you ship your products or just the areas where you provide services. So you want to set your locations depending on where you want your ads to show. And then next is gonna be who should see your ads. For me, I always just do people in my targeted location. I just want people in Canada and in the United States to see my advertisements. So we're gonna click on save and go to the next step. So now we can set up our ad groups. So what I would recommend doing when you're setting up your dynamic ad groups is to just set really one focus target per ad group. So if we scroll down here, you can see ad group name. I'll set this in a minute. But what we can do is you can target categories of web pages. So you can see some of these different categories here. You can target all web pages. So every single web page on your website, your entire website you can use for targeting. It's gonna be very broad. I don't really recommend doing that unless you really wanna expand your campaign. Set your bids low to target all web pages and see if any keywords do drive conversions for you. 
Now, I would highly recommend keeping your targets really relevant in each individual ad group and keeping things really organized. You can target specific web pages. So if I click here, I can do URL contains and I can choose URL specifically from my website. And then what we can do is target custom labels for my page feed. So you're gonna see use this custom label. And for example, one of the labels that I had was sync. So if I come here and do syncs and I add it over here to the right hand side, then it's going to use that custom label from my page feed. And then it's going to, we can set a bid here. So let's just say I want to bid 75 cents. And then what I can do is come up to the top for ad group name and do syncs. Now keep in mind, if I do have syncs here as my targeting, it's going to be a little bit more broad because I'm targeting basically several different pages on my website that have to do with syncs, you're really better off targeting things separately in separate ad groups because your ads are gonna be more relevant and you're gonna make sure you're driving traffic to the best landing pages. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of the syncs here and let's just say for example, for this campaign, I wanna target some different farmhouse Christmas decoration ideas. So some of these different products for sale that I have on my website, I wanna target them in my different ad groups. So I'm gonna set up five total ad groups and I'm just gonna use my website URLs for targeting and I'll go through each and every one of them. So now we're gonna remove all targets from this ad set. So now we have clear ad sets. So we're gonna start with our first ad group and what we're gonna do is just keep it broad and we're gonna do farmhouse Christmas decorations. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna target specific web pages and we're gonna do URL contains. Now you can also choose category, page title, page content, or custom label, but we're gonna do URL contains and then we're gonna come over here and what we're gonna do is just take this URL right here, so copy it and we're gonna paste it and we're just gonna do our URL. So farmhousegoals.com, we're gonna get rid of the HTTPS and then farmhouse Christmas decorations. We're gonna add this over to the right hand side. Now the other one that I want to target with is we're going to use the shop page. So you can see right here, I have farmhousegoals.com, product category, farmhouse Christmas decor. We're going to do the same thing here and URL contains, we're going to copy and paste it and we'll add this URL as well over here. And what we're going to do is set our bids. So it's going to use the default ad group bid here, $1 US dollars for our bid. But what I can do is set separate bids here for these individual targets and we'll set them at 75 cents. Okay. So what we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to create a new ad group. So you can continue to do this for different ad groups. And what you might want to do is you're going to see shop farmhouse Christmas decor here. I can just click over that and use this category. So it's going to use that category of my website. I prefer to just use page URLs because I think it helps me organize the campaign. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to take this one. We have farmhouse Christmas stockings. So we're going to copy the URL and do the same exact thing. So we're going to target specific web pages URL contains farmhouse Christmas stockings. We'll get rid of the HTTPS. So we're going to add this target over to the right hand side. And then I want to add my other page as well. So I'm going to come over to my farmhouse Christmas decorations page. And for Christmas stockings, I can just come right here for farmhouse Christmas stockings. I'll right click. We're going to copy the link address, come back over and then URL contains copy and paste it right here. So this is how you're going to be able to set up targets and we can set these up into different ad groups. And we can make sure that we're targeting some of these different ad groups and keeping things really relevant for our advertisements. So we're going to come over here and name our ad group farmhouse Christmas stockings. So we're going to continue to do this for a couple different categories of products for sale. So some of the other ones I'm going to do are Christmas signs and wall decor. I'm going to do Christmas ornaments and I'm going to do Christmas garlands. So I'm going to do these five ad groups to set up this campaign. And really what you want to do is continue to add more and more ad groups for the different pages on your website. With dynamic search ads, one good thing is you can always start with something like 20 ad groups and just go in and try to add more and more ad groups as you continue to build your campaign. But you can always launch your campaign and then continue to add more dynamic ad targets as you go. So we'll come over here. I'm going to set up my different ad groups. I'm going to fast forward through this part a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing here with the URL contains and use those two different pages on my website to make sure I can see which ones are going to perform best in Microsoft advertising with my dynamic search ads. So we'll set up a few more ad groups here. Okay, so we have our five ad groups created and just to quickly go into one of them, so farmhouse Christmas ornaments, if we come here, I'm targeting the two pages on my website. So one is more of a blog style post with a lot of different farmhouse Christmas ornaments for sale. And then one of them is the shop page on my website. So when people come into this page right here, farmhouse Christmas ornaments, they're gonna see a ton of different products for sale that they can easily purchase and add to their Christmas tree. So if I come back over here to my dynamic search ads campaign, what we wanna do next is save and we're gonna go to the next step. So now what you wanna do is you wanna create ads and you wanna create ad extensions. 
Now, dynamic search ads are a little bit different because your ad title is dynamically generated and your final URL is that dynamically selected landing page. So you don't set either of those. You just set your ad text and your ad text too. And then you can also set a path here. So what I can do for path is for farmhouse Christmas decorations, I can just do farmhouse Christmas decor. So now people are gonna see this path when they see my URL in the Bing dot com search results you can see some of the ways these different advertisements are going to look top view side view and mobile view so if we click on top view here what we're going to do is set some ad text and which a really a best practice here is to create two ads per ad group as you set up your dynamic search ads and to use ad text that's going to convince people to click to your website and hopefully purchase something from you or contact you depending on what your goals are okay so i've added some ad text here you're going to see shop farmhouse christmas decorations at farmhouse goals and then let's just say I'm running a sale, so save 20% on all Christmas decoration purchases before November 1st. So we can click on save or save and create another. And then we can adjust our ad text for the second advertisement here. So maybe what we wanna do is take this one, we'll just put it in the top row. Okay, and maybe add text too. What I'll do is list some of the different things that we have for sale. So I'll do shop farmhouse, Christmas ornaments, wreaths, stockings, and wall decor. Okay, so you can create a couple different advertisements pretty easily using that method. Now, what I would recommend doing is, again, two ads per ad group. You can create three if you want. It's really easy to do copy ad. Now, these are much easier to create because you don't even have to worry about creating any headlines. You don't need to worry about setting up your URLs. What you want to do is just make sure that your ad text is geared towards your targets. So for the second one, for farmhouse Christmas stockings, what I would do is I would come in here to create ad, and I would do something like shop farmhouse Christmas stockings. So I would want to focus on some of the different things that I'm targeting to keep my ads as targeted as possible and as relevant as possible to what people are searching when they do find my advertisements. Okay, so this is what I'll do for now. Now, obviously, you want to keep creating advertisements, but you can just see here. So for Farmhouse Christmas Stockings ad group, I start with Shop Farmhouse Christmas Stockings. For Farmhouse Christmas Signs, Farmhouse Christmas Signs. Ornaments, we have ornaments. And for garlands, we have garlands here. So all those things, just make sure your advertisements really closely match your targets, especially when you're using dynamic search ads. So now we're gonna keep scrolling down. The next thing you wanna do is create ad extensions. So some of the different ad extensions you wanna create are call out extensions. You can use structured snippet extensions. And then the other one that you definitely wanna use are site link extensions here. Now you can also incorporate prices, location extensions. If you have a mobile app, you can use app extensions. If you receive phone calls, then you can use call extensions. And you can also incorporate review extensions as well. So for this example, I'll show you structured snippet extensions, site link extensions, and callout extensions. So what we'll do with callout is we'll create some new ones. We'll add new callout extension. And what we'll do is, okay, so we'll start with farmhouse holiday decor. So we'll click on save. And we have our first callout extension here. We'll add a new one. We'll do save 20% until November 1. Okay, we'll click on save. So now we have a promotion here as well. So call out extensions are really used to highlight some of the different promotions that you're running, maybe some of the benefits that people have when they do shop from you. So if I have a free shipping offer or anything like that, I can continue to add more call out extensions here. You can see you can add a max of 20. I would recommend adding four, five, six call out extensions. And you can add these to your ad group level as well. So you can make sure your call out extensions really match what people are looking for. So what I can do is we'll add another one. Okay, we'll do plan your farm Christmas, click on save, and then we'll just do one last one and we'll do farmhouse. And for the last one, we'll just do improve farmhouse decor. So you can add more call out extensions here. There's really no downside to adding more call out extensions. Over time, they're gonna show the best ad extensions that are performing the best for your campaign. So we're gonna keep scrolling down here. We have our call out extensions added. The next thing is gonna be structure snippet extensions. So if we click to add a new one here, you're gonna see our header. It's gonna be English for our language, and then you can choose from all these different options here. So amenities, brands, courses, degree programs, destinations, featured hotels. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna choose items. So for items, you're gonna see the example is laptops, TVs, game consoles. What we're gonna do for values here is we're gonna do ornaments, signs, stockings, do garlands, and we'll add one more and we'll do wreaths. So you can also do farmhouse for all of these. I can put farmhouse ornaments, farmhouse signs, but for now I'm just gonna do ornaments, signs, stockings, garlands, wreaths, 
And what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll click on save. So now we have our structured snippet extensions added. We can keep scrolling down. The last thing we want to do is add site link extensions. So for site link ex extensions, we can just link to some of the pages that I showed you previously. So we'll just come over here to add new site link extension. And for link text, what we're going to do is we're going to start here with farmhouse Christmas stockings. We'll copy paste this and we'll use it as the final URL. Now what we want to do is add link text. So we'll just do, we'll keep this simple. We'll just do farmhouse Christmas stockings. Now you definitely want to add descriptions here to make this go a little bit quicker. I'm not going to be adding descriptions, but you can add 35 characters here and 35 characters here and click on save. So now you can add our first site link extension. We have this added to our campaign. So we'll add another one here. And what we'll do is we'll come over farmhouse Christmas signs. So we'll come back over here, final URL, and we'll do farmhouse Christmas signs. We'll click on save down here. So we're going to add another one. And what we can do is maybe we'll send people directly to this page with our farmhouse Christmas decorations. This is really more of a broad page where people can browse some of the different pages that we have on our website. So we'll come over here and we'll, for final URL, we'll copy and paste this and we'll do shop farmhouse Christmas decor. We'll click on save. And then we'll just do one more here. So we're going to come over, we'll do farmhouse Christmas ornaments, add a new site link extension, add it to the final URL, and then the same thing. So farmhouse Christmas ornaments. Okay, so now click on save. So we have our site link extensions added. We're going to come up here. We have our structured snippets added. And then what we have is our call out extensions added as well. Again, you can keep adding more of these add extensions as you go. But what we want to do is click on save and go to the next step. Okay, so next is going to be campaign budget. We're going to keep our $20 budget. We're going to keep scrolling down here and you're going to see our bid strategy. So the bid strategy I would recommend using for Microsoft advertising is enhanced CPC, but you have to make sure you are using conversion tracking. So I'll go over conversion tracking in a follow up video if you don't have conversions tracked yet. But basically what you want to do is you add the Microsoft advertising universal event tracking tag to your website. And then you can track when people visit custom pages, when people are on your website for a certain period of time, when people complete certain events on your website, or even sales on your website. So I've gone over some different ways to track conversions using Microsoft advertising in the past, and I'll create a new video to go over this in a little bit more detail. Now next is going to show our ad group bid. So you can keep this as is. I actually set bids for each individual target. So right now my bid for this is set at 75 cents and these are all set at 80 cents. So maybe what I can do here is just adjust that just so they match all the bids. Okay, so we have all of our bids here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on save. Now, once we click on save, our campaign is created. We can click on got it over here. So it's not officially approved yet, but we have our dynamic search ads example for farmhouse goals. If we click on it, you're going to see the different ad groups that we created. So farmhouse Christmas decorations, ornaments, stocking signs. And then what we can do is if we click on this right here, so we'll click on the ad group and you can see the actual targeting that we're using for each ad group. So under auto targets here, so we scroll down, you're going to see for farmhouse Christmas decorations, we're targeting these different URLs right here. And then what we can also do is we can also come to our advertisements. So we'll click on advertisements and you're going to be able to see the different ads that we're running. And by running a couple different ads against each other, you're going to be able to get some data on which ads are performing the best for your campaign. And then over time, those ones will continue to show and you can always come here and you can pause a specific advertisement and then create a new one and continue to improve your campaigns that way. Now, the other thing you're going to see here is keywords. So if we come to our campaign level and we go to keywords so we're not targeting any keywords here but one thing you might want to do is once you start getting some data look at your search terms use the search terms report to add negative keywords to your campaign because dynamic search ads are targeted using your website so you're going to get some unrelated searches in here and really what you want to do is make sure you're keeping things as relevant as possible to the keywords that are going to be the best for your business in terms of driving sales and driving conversions on your website so this is how to do dynamic search ads again if you create a campaign you can always go back and create more ad groups set up more auto targets and then what you can do is come over here to the shared library go to your business data manage your page feeds and you can continue to use your page feed in your targeting as well. Or you can just come to your website and just take URLs the way I did for this tutorial. So if you have any questions about Microsoft advertising dynamic search ads, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.